mercy upon us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy, and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty and ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpasses the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and brewed out a wine vat in it. He expected to yield grapes but it yielded wild grapes. And now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge, and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste, it shall not be pruned or hoed, and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds, and the rain, and they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. He expected justice but saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry, the word of the Lord. Thanks. Our responsorial song, the vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. You brought a vine out of Egypt. You drove out the nations and planted it. It sent out its branches to the sea, and it shoots to the river. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Why then have you broken down its walls, so that all who pass along the way pluck its fruit? The boar from the forest ravages it, and all the move in the field feed on it. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Turn again, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven and see. Have regard for this vine, the stock that your right hand planted. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Then we will never turn back from you. Give us life, and we will call on your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine, that we may be saved. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, do not worry about anything but in everything. By prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. Finally, brothers and sisters, Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. I have chosen you from the world, says the Lord, 
to go and bear fruit that will last. Put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to the tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants, who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you, and given to a people that produces the fruits of of the kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Welcome, everybody. It's nice to see you all this morning. The readings again this week are challenging. It's difficult to give a homily when times are challenging too. It seems like everything is kind of, it's like a big storm that we're in the middle of. And if we read the scriptures today, the thing that strikes me most or first is from the reading of Isaiah. Let me sing for my beloved, my love song concerning his vineyard. Who is his vineyard? The responsorial psalm tells us the vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. And who is the house of Israel? We are. We are the house of Israel. The new Jerusalem. The church. The body of Christ. So that gives us a position in the world. We are the body of Christ. So even when all these terrible things are going on in the world, we are still, we remain as the body of Christ, planted in the ground. And that's beautiful. He dug it and cleared it of He took a fertile hill. This is like baptism. We're a fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. The sacraments, Eucharist, confirmation. He built a watchtower in the midst of it. A life of prayer so that we can be focused and centered on Christ. He built a wine press so that he could take the fruit from the wine to make it into a wonderful wine that would give life to others. This is what Christ asks of us. But with great gifts come great responsibility. What do we do with it? If we are the chosen people, and we are the chosen people, the church 
the body of Christ is the chosen people. What do we do with the fruit? Do we even create fruit on our mind? So it's a challenging story, really. God looked out on the house of Israel, and he's, the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. That's us, the people of Judah. He looks out on us and he loves us. What is my people doing? What are we doing to make the world better, to calm the storm, to bring peace to the world? Oftentimes there's not much we can do. Really, what can we do? I listened to a, a Benedictine monk on, the, on a podcast coming home from work the other day. And he was saying, well, actually, he was asked, how are you an evangelist in the world when all you do is you go and you build a monastery and you just stay there and you never leave it? How are you actually evangelizing? And he said, we evangelize by being a presence of God in the world, a presence of peace. We don't go out to change anybody. We let people look at the way we live. And we can relate to that. Anybody who's, who's gone to St. Benoit de Lac, especially at apple picking time, there's thousands of people there. And you'll see a little monk walking up the road by himself, quietly. And just him walking up the road by himself in all that pandemonium, he's like, I wish I had what he had. What does he have that I don't have? He has a deep relationship with Christ. He abides in the love of Christ. How beautiful is that? So when all this craziness has gone around in the world, he's focused on the true, the good, the beautiful. That's what Paul talks about in the Philipp to the letter of the Philippians. Do not worry about anything, brothers and sisters, he says, but by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, we pray, we supplicate, and then we give thanks because God will answer our prayers. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. How beautiful is that? Reminds me of Saint Edith Stein who died in a concentration camp. She found peace in the, in the concentration, or she maintained the peace that she had found in the concentration camp. How did she do that? Because she concentrated on whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable. She kept her eyes on heaven, on Christ. Then when we read the gospel, at first it seems really negative, like I have no chance. You know, I'm always turning my back on God, I'm always doing things I shouldn't do. You know, if there's one passage in the Bible that really sh strikes a chord with me, it's Romans 7 where Paul says, I do the things I don't want to do and I don't do the things I want to do. So I have no chance until I remember. It says, this is the heir, come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. Okay, now I'm thinking, okay, kill the heir. So the heir obviously is Christ. 
and we killed him. And what was the inheritance that we got from Christ? That's Christ on the cross right there. We, I nailed him. I beat him. I put his crown of thorns on him. And he gives us his body at the consecration. That's what he does for us. Me, a sinner, I'm one of the discarded stones, just like you, and he brings us together to become the cornerstones of a new structure, the new Israel, the new Jerusalem, the church, the body of Christ. So this week, maybe we can reflect on how we are fruitful in the world. If I am peaceful in my place of work, can I bring peace to it? If I am peaceful in the parish, can I bring peace to it? If I am peaceful in my home, can I bring peace to it? Can I bring peace? And that's the question. Can I be the loving, peaceful presence of Christ in the world? And that's what we will have to answer for. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. <laughs> For the church, people of God, entrusted with offering the gift of faith to the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of the world's peoples, called to help their people grow to the fullness of their human dignity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who struggle, for a share in the bounty of God's creation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For us, gathered here, a community of faith called to recognize the power entrusted to us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Rita sings our man from Margaret Gary, Lord, hear our prayer. And for peace in the world. Amidst all of the war games that different countries are having, that peace will reign in their leaders' hearts, the peace of Christ. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all those victims of war and disaster, the people of Lebanon, the people of Syria, who are starving right now, for all those people who are struggling, in El Salvador, Nicaragua, priests that we are providing with pastors, good shepherds for our flocks, Lord. Accept, O oh Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate in dutiful service, graciously to the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, he dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in 
community in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Good morning, everyone. Please take a copy of the bulletin. Uh, there's a few little interesting things in there. And uh, we also ask you to pray for Father Pierre, who's doing better. He had a pacemaker put in on Monday, and he has to stay home for two weeks and recuperate. So we thank Deacon Nick for being here this morning and helping us out. Also, if you are planning on coming to a Mass next week, next weekend, which is Thanksgiving weekend, by the way, so some of you might be not available, uh, you can sign in today for next week. So you just pick the Mass that you want to come to, and you can sign in, and that way your place is reserved already. You don't have to get here half an hour before Mass starts. So have a good week. Thank you for being here this morning. It is also the roof fund collection. So if you don't have envelopes and you want to contribute to the roof fund, there's a second basket there. Thank you very much and have a good week. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the 
the sacraments which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Maybe we can say a Hail Mary to ask for an increase in vocations. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst me, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly.